Before we go further in the Deals Alder Psycho Edition, we need to talk a little bit more about the diene. So, in order for the diene to react, it needs to have this shape. Um, and you might say, wow, what other shape could, could it possibly have? Well, in most dienes, this, uh, this bond, the bond between carbon-2 and carbon-3, can freely rotate. And so, it is in equilibrium with another conformation. It turns out this conformation is known as the S trans conformation. And this is called the S, the top one is called the S cis conformation. These are two different conformations. The S trans conformation is more stable. So that means that for most dienes that can freely rotate about carbon-2 and carbon-3, that sigma bond, the more stable conformation cannot undergo a Diels-Alder. So no Diels-Alder here. So this bond needs to rotate, give you the S-cis conformation, then once you're in the S-cis conformation, everything is nicely lined up for the Diels-Alder cycloaddition to occur. Well, this has some consequences. One, it means almost always the, the available concentration of your diene is less than what you think because you need specifically the S-cis conformation, not the S-trans conformation. The S-cis conformation is less stable because these hydrogens, at least on this molecule that I've drawn, which is 1,3-butadiene, you get a steric repulsion, and that steric repulsion is not present in the S-trans conformation. So anything you do to your diene that makes that steric repulsion bigger, like what if you put a methyl group there, this steric repulsion is getting very large, and so therefore the conform this conformation, the S-cis conformation, will be much less likely and much less available for any reaction. So you would expect this particular diene, let's redraw it, to be very weakly reactive because you simply have a very low concentration of the S-cis conformation. Furthermore, sometimes in dienes, and this is a classic trick question, Sometimes your diene looks like this. Well, this diene is locked in the S-trans conformation. You can't freely rotate about that bond because it's part of a ring. Since it's locked in the S-trans conformation, that means your concentration of the S-cis conformation is zero, and therefore you cannot get a Diels-Alder reaction. Another classic trick question in Diels-Alders is to draw a diene like this and say, will this diene do a Diels-Alder? And you look at it and you say, oh my goodness, of course it can't do a Diels-Alder. It's in the S-trans conformation. However, just because you've drawn the S-trans conformation, this thing certainly has access to the S-cis conformation, and it will be able to do a Diels-Alder reaction. Just because someone's standing up, you, would, you wouldn't say, oh, that person can't drive a car because you can't drive a car standing up. Of course not. They'll change conformation, they'll sit down in the seat, and then they'll be able to drive the car. So you can't look at a molecule in one conformation and assume that it's stuck there. If there's free rotation, there's free rotation. However, some molecules, as we see this one on the bottom right, they are indeed locked in a specific conformation they can't react. Regardless, for any diene to undergo a Diels-Alder cycloaddition, it must have access to this S-cis conformation.